We're Multipoint Web from the United States. I'm Jimmy. I'm Luke. I'm Mark. Uh, we're the Dickinson Brothers. Actually, there are 13 of us. So you can imagine, growing up, we had to share a lot of things. Our mother is also a teacher. So this led us into the millennium goal of primary education, bringing education to students around the world. Many students are not receiving a primary education due to a lack of resources. Often, a single student to a single computer is not cost efficient or even possible. Our solution allows multiple students to play educational games on a single computer. There is a need for teachers to share and access teaching material. Our solution allows teachers to create, customize, and collaborate to bring creative lessons to the classroom. The biggest impact that our project has is that before, um, when a teacher had a lesson, only one student could use that lesson on one computer. Um, but now, when a teacher has a lesson, multiple students can use the same computer to learn from. So previously, uh, the solution to this problem was to find more funds to add more resources. But our solution uses the existing resources to benefit more students. For example, a teacher may be able to effectively teach 10 or 15 children, depending on their background. Our tool may allow them to teach 20 or 30, or teach those 10 children more effectively. Some of the games that teachers can choose from, there's actually a couple types. There's uh, parallel, cooperative, and competitive. Competitive is obviously you're generally competing for resources, like the rat race is competitive. You're not really competing for resources, I guess, but it shows you know, the rats moving, so it feels competitive. There's no winners in any of the games. There is a higher score, but you don't see it. The teacher does. Cooperative games, um, that actually requires teamwork. You can't do it on your own, and it requires at least two players to work together to get an answer. With Parallel, everyone can play, and they have their own questions and their own answers, and they're kind of in their own world, yet they're all playing together on the same computer. Um, just to pick a couple games that we have on there that they can choose is they have Rat Race, for example, and that's a competitive game. Every student has their own rat. And when you get the correct answer, your rat moves just a little quicker. And so you can see you know, your rat compared to another student you're playing on the same machine, um, you know, who's winning. So it's, it's fairly competitive. There's also another game called Bubbles. And this one, they just have questions and the answers are on these big bubbles. And it's just first person to click on the bubble and to get the correct one. So it's kind of a, kind of a speed one. But if you click the wrong answer, you can't click for a little while longer. We also have another game that's a chicken game. And with the chicken game, there's a chicken at the top that has questions and lays eggs for answers. And you have to go walk underneath the correct egg, and if you get the correct answer, you get a plus. And if you get the wrong one, you turn into a chicken. Another game we have is Bugs. And Bugs is a parallel game. With Bugs, every player has their own bug, and they have the answer to the questions that are on the side of the screen. And so you have to move your bug to go to the correct answer. Each one of us actually have different answers and there's several questions out there. And so it's not like we're competing for the correct, you know, to, to get there first because, you know, we're all supposed to go different places. And so it's an example of a parallel game. Just as a student, they would just, they would log into the classroom by entering their classroom name. And they would be presented with the dashboard. This would be with a couple of their games up there. With this dashboard, they can click on one of the games and edit the content of the game. This is the real power of the teaching card. They can change the questions, change the answers. You just, they're just text, you just change them. It doesn't matter what language, it really doesn't matter what topic. It could be English, it could be grammar, it could be math. Possibilities are endless. Now, the flexibility of these games is nice. We have our lesson data, but what if we wanted to use this lesson on a different type of game. We wanted to play it on the rat race game. Maybe we wanted to play it on bubbles. It's as simple as going and changing the activity type, and this lesson data will work with any activity type. The platform is extensible. Games can be built in Potfly as well. There is an advanced mode, we won't go into that, but it allows you to build Flash games, Silverlight games, even JavaScript games, and plug them into our system. These can be added in, and the lesson data will integrate straight to those games. Teachers can actually share and collaborate their lesson plans and games with other teachers around the world. But to search other games, all we have to do is just put in the criteria, put in the search criteria, such as we can choose by language, we can choose by topic, we can choose even by age group. All you do is you search, find the game, click on it, hit add, it's added to your dashboard. Every time a student finishes a game, the game reports their scores back to the classroom. 
And this is important because now the teacher can monitor the progress of each student. In the reports, they can see the, the classroom overview and get a snapshot of the classroom. But they can also drill down to a student level and see how well a student is progressing or struggling in a particular activity. You can actually play these games offline. The install is extremely simple. You click the offline button, click OK, it's already on your computer. You can play the students can play the games, teachers can even edit the games, and as soon as you connect back online, they synchronize back up. If another teacher around the world is looking for a very specific lesson to fit their needs, they may find it. Such as we have a game called Geography Around the World. If you search Geography Around the World, this will come up in the top 10. And that will be linked back to our site. As more games are created, uh, more search terms are now pushed out there, and thus more people come in to create more games, and you get the whole snowball effect. We have this box, and the idea of the box is it's something physical. It has the mice, the USB hub, at a cheaper price than this teacher can to go out and buy mice themselves. I don't have to go out and buy mice. I don't have to know what a USB hub is. I just get this and I plug it into the computer, and it has the software if in case you don't have the internet as well. That's where we're struggling, the business plan. Our product is demo ready at the moment and is close to uh, launch. We're currently using Silverlight 3, it's in beta, but it has been announced to come out this summer. And as soon as that has come out, every, every other piece of our project has been running smoothly in our recent case studies. We plan on expanding to different age groups by building games that, apply, that appeal better to the different students at different age levels. Three places we went to to conduct our uh, case study was a Spanish classroom, a daycare, and a Boy Scout group. We performed a pre-test and a post-test. We split up into two groups. One studied through paper and one studied by playing our games. After this was completed, we, can, we got back together and performed a post-test just to see how much the students have improved. The problems we had during our case study were um, for example, in our bubbles game, kids would click on the bubbles and they would continuously click until they were all gone. There was no control, it was very chaotic. Our solution to this problem was we made sure all of our games had more control. By disabling the mouse after clicking of the wrong answer, it would uh, give more control to the game and allow the game to function correctly. Um, another problem we had was students had didn't know what was going on. A solution for this was we added feedback. If you got the right answer, it would give you a plus one. If it gave you the wrong answer, it gave you some negative feedback so you would know what you did was the wrong answer. The last problem we had was many students, they were playing the games and it was working, but they, it was hard, they had a hard time figuring out what was the correct answer. So in all of our games now, after a round is over, it shows the right answer for a couple of seconds by itself so everyone will know what the correct answer is. One of our last observations, the students enjoyed playing on the games, as in they would play the games much longer than they would have done on paper. The first place I went to was my Spanish class. My teacher was very excited about our idea as in our class we do many collaborative group learning activities. She had a lot of feedback that really improved our project. When we went to the Boy Scout group, we connected the laptop to our uh, TV. From here, we had the most mice that I've seen personally on a, in our program. When we went to the daycare, we were able to work with uh, three different kids. A third grader, a first grader, and a preschooler. The first grader there asked me, actually, if, we, if I could make a game that we're, where we eat the most cotton candy. With our program, this could actually be very possible. One of the students there was the preschooler. At first, he had a very hard time using a mouse. Personally, I don't know if he's even used one before. But by the end, he was using it on his own and able to play for our physics games. And he was having fun. When students are actually playing the games, it's actually very easy for them to understand um, what's going on very quickly. So if they, have a, if they have a rat, they actually have, the rat actually has like a little red on it if you're the red pointer. And if you're blue, you know, the rat will have a little bit of blue on it so you know, oh, that's mine. Uh, it's well known that there are a lot of classrooms out there with limited resources. Our solution looks at this in a new way by allowing multiple students to use a single computer which uh, multiplies the available resources in a particular classroom. With multi-point web, students can easily share available community resources. Teachers can share and customize lesson materials. Imagine a world where every student has access to primary education.